This is the poster design lecture. And on this first slide, we're looking at Alexander Rodchenko on the left. And this poster was made around 1925. It's titled Spread Books of All Branches of Knowledge. And we can see his use of bold color and that the photos and text are trapped. They are compartmentalized in the architectural structure that he designed. On the bottom right corner, we can see him riffing off of L. Lezinski's Beat the White with the Red Wedge made in 1920. The symbolism at the time was about the Bolsheviks beating the White Russian monarchs. And if we look at this closely, we can see that the White Russian monarchs are this white circle, and the Bolsheviks are symbolized by this red triangle. And we can see it kind of shattering or opening that white circle. Both of these designers were part of the Russian constructivist movement. We can see balance, angularity, movement, strict use of the grid forms, and geometry. On the top right corner, we can see that the designer for the Franz Ferdinand record was heavily influenced by the Raj Hanko poster, Spread Books of All Branches of Knowledge. We're looking at Viktor Koretsky. He is a Russian propaganda artist and try to convince the world of communism's moral integrity. If we look at the left side, we can see brotherhood and equality among all nations. That was from 1965. We can really see this balance, the use of symmetry and asymmetry simultaneously. We can also see a focus on balance. On the right side, we're looking at solid peace for the world. It was made around 1960. And we see people from all nations holding one flag, as they are unified. The integration of text on these two posters are very subtle. Image becomes the top of the hierarchy. We're looking at more posters by Viktor Koretsky. On the left side, it says, people will break the monopolies, and it was made in 1960. The snake is representing the monopolies, and we can see this proletariat man wrestling the snake, and the text embedded or entangled within the image. On the right, we see We Demand Peace, which was made in 1952, right after the wars. It was an anti-imperialist propaganda for friendship of all nations. It was against war and also unifying the UN. The text embedded in the flag says, We Demand Peace, as we see this image of a proletariat worker banging his hand on the table of the UN saying, We Demand Peace. We're looking at Emory Douglas. He was the sole illustrator for the Black Panthers around 1970. His subject matters often revolved around peace and equality of African Americans and Africans. If we look at the left, we can see the juxtaposition of the rigid industrial bombs over the organic illustration of a poor victim. We see an example of the poor and people of color being victims of war. On the right, we see an image of a Black Panther fighting back against the police and oppression of Black Americans. It says, we always keep close watch on the fascist movements so that they will have a miserable ending. And one thing we see congruent with a lot of these posters that we've been looking at is that they're very simple, two colors and very bold statements. On the left, we're looking at Milton Glaser from around 2005. It says, we are all African. And he put them around New York City in response to Darfur and the Sudanese genocide, a very powerful image of unification. On the right side, we have a United Colors of Benetton campaign poster. This one revolves around racial unification with the actual photos of hearts from different people. And we can see that they all look the same. Very powerful. On the left, we're looking at Banksy in 2007. This was a symbol he put up on the West Bank wall. It's very ironic as we can see that the peace dove has a bulletproof vest with a target. Obviously, this isn't a poster, but I thought it would go well with symbolism, things that we're going to be dealing with with our poster design. On the right, we see a United Colors of Benetton campaign poster, and it's a prime minister of Israel kissing the president of Palestine. And specifically on the poster, it says, Unhate. United Colors of Benetton supports the Unhate Foundation. We're looking at an Amnesty International poster. Amnesty International is an advocacy group for international law and peace. And on this, we can see a world described by images of war. That war exists in all parts of the world. And in the quote at the bottom, it says, everybody is against everybody. Somebody has to be for them. And then under that, the subtitle says, Amnesty International, 27 years of supporting the rights for all. 
specifically advocating for refugees of war. This is a poster designed by Copper Green, which was made around 2005. Milton Glaser wrote about this in the Design of Descent book. It's a parody on the dancing iPod commercials from around the mid-2000s. Copper Green Gorilla posted this poster around San Francisco, New York City, and LA. We can see that this poster was specifically a response to the torture at Abu Ghraib prison and to the illegal war in Iraq. And at the bottom we can see it says 10,000 volts in your pocket, guilty or innocent. So in Milton Glaser's book, The Design of Dissent, he kind of breaks down the research and influences that Copper Green potentially used, the heavy symbols that we can see throughout history. On the top we see photography that's inspired by public execution and humiliation from the Spanish Civil War to the Vietnam War, to Palestine, to Abu Ghraib. In the middle, we have images of the Ku Klux Klan, Jesus, the Black Moses Isaac Hayes, Barbara Kruger's feminism, the People vs. Larry Flint. And on the bottom, we have cave paintings, Greek earthenware, we have the silhouette of Sonny Rollins' jazz record, we also have the Hitchcock vertigo, where we see that silhouette, we also have Paul Smith, and the iPod logo. So all of these things went into influencing Copper Green's resolve. Obviously, she wasn't directly looking at every single one of these things, but it was kind of like amalgamating all of these images and coming to this conclusion of an ironic subversion of these historical images. We're looking at Fang Chen. The reason I wanted to show you these, these aren't very typographic heavy images, but I thought they were very powerful on their own. And students are going to have to, for this project, start developing posters that have hierarchy. And I imagine some people will choose image as their hierarchy, and some people will choose text as their hierarchy. In this case, Fang Chen chooses image as hierarchy. On the left side, we can see it's an anti-war poster, where it looks like a hand possibly has blown off fingers, and it's holding a peace symbol. On the right side, we see a money symbol at the top, and it reads like a vision chart. If we can see the second level, is man and woman. And then on the third level, we see that endangered species start getting involved. And then it keeps going down and down till we don't see anything. So very much specifically talking about capitalism and humans exploiting nature. We're looking at Shepherd Ferry here. These are anti-war posters that were made around the time of the Iraq War between 2004 and 2006. On the left, it says, make art, not war. And we can see this very symmetrical image, but also playing with asymmetry. We see the counterbalance of art and not and make and war. Also, a very simple image of these flowers inside of these guns, but then at the bottom, his kind of characteristic obey imagery. These are more of Shepard Fairey's poster designs. On the left, we see one about clean energy. He's made a very graphic image, very much referencing Russian propaganda posters, very minimal color scheme. At the bottom it says, Clean Energy for America. And then in the subtitle it says, Power Up America. And then on the right side, he has a poster about voting. It says, Vote. And then there's a ballot box with a little speaker on it that says, This call to action provided by Obey. That's his organization, Obey Giant. So it's like Shepard Ferry telling you to go vote. So we're looking at a Greenpeace poster here. Greenpeace is very aggressive with their imagery in regard to cruelty to nature, cruelty to animals. So in this poster, we see a print from an actual bird that was from the Rena disaster. And it's oil on a bird, and they obviously stamped it to paper and made it the poster image. And then at the bottom, it says, this oil print was made using an actual bird killed in the Rena disaster. Obviously, the hierarchy becomes the shocking image of this bird, dead, that's imbued with oil. And then the title comes in, and then it's kind of a second punch. Very powerful. So these are more Greenpeace ads. On the right, we can see BP, and it says Moving Beyond Petroleum. This poster was specifically to the reaction of the BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico around 2010. On the right side, we see a Greenpeace poster. And this is a photograph of somebody putting up the poster. 
It has a caution symbol with a skull in it, and it says, Levi's, make fashion without pollution. And it's specifically in reference to their runoff from their dyes and their jeans. And Levi's response to a lot of this was their waterless jeans. So it's interesting how some of this publicity actually does make change. We're looking at posters made by Stanley Thomas Clough between the 1920s and 1940s. And these were made through the WPA, or the Workers' Progress Administration. And they gave money to artists to help them uh, make posters and ads for public parks. And we can see the ones that he made for the public parks here. On the left, it says, let them grow. And in the middle, it says, spare our trees. And on the right, it says, only God can make a tree. Very powerful images, very simple. And the hierarchy is very evident. The image is the top of the hierarchy, the text, the second part of the hierarchy, and then posters by the Federal Art Project, the WPA. So very staggering forms of hierarchy. Obviously, we can see here that he's using a minimal use of color. Obviously, if it's a government-sponsored project, they're going to want to save money on printing. So we can see these very minimalist posters, but very powerful. So I wanted us to take a step and look at these symbols that we see that kind of run throughout history. On the left, we're seeing an old engraving, probably around the 1800s, on the top left corner. And we can see this tarot card, and the skeleton is smoking. And we see a time capsule in his hand communicating the ideas of death. In the middle, we see an ad by Jose Guadalupe Posada. Obviously, Posado was referencing the Day of the Dead, but we can see the skeleton with a cigar in its mouth. A very iconic image, but again, thinking about death and smoking. On the right side at the top, we're looking at a portrait by Van Gogh. It was specifically of a skull smoking. Again, the idea of smoking being associated with death. And then the bottom left corner, we see M.C. Escher with this skull and a cigarette in its mouth. Again, thinking about death. And then on the bottom right corner, we see John michel Basquiat making a piece of work in the mid-80s. And it says nervous system filter. And we can see the skeleton with this jaw kind of eating the cigarette. Again, confronting these images of death. But the one thing that's very unifying with all these throughout a very long period of history from, let's say, the mid-1800s all the way to the mid-1980s, we can see that this image of a smoking skull worked its way throughout history. So these images of smoking and death really become a very powerful symbol. Not to say that we want to use images of skulls, but they're universal and they're timeless. And these are things that we're gonna be thinking about when we make our poster. These were posters that were made for an AIGA conference. On the left, we're looking at a Paul Rand AIGA poster. And we can see that he's taking this modernist approach. It was made in the 60s, so we can see him deconstructing type with flat colors, kind of blocking out areas, making it more readable, pulling out the bare essentials, for example, we can see the A, we can see the G, and we can see the top or apex of the bottom A. And we can see the I just becoming the dot symbols. So we see A, I, G, A. Definitely more readable than legible. On the right, we're looking at Stefan Sagmeister. He made this poster for the AIGA conference in Detroit at Cranbrook University in the 1990s. He was working with the shock of the image and the distance a designer would go to to get a captivating poster. We can see that his hierarchy is obviously the shocking photo. Then the text. He had an intern volunteer to be carved on with a razor. This is absolutely not Photoshop. He also does some silly things here. We can see here that he says style equals fart. In some ways, I think Sagmeister was poking fun at the institution of the AIGA and how elitist this institution can be. So with our poster designs, I want us to start thinking about things like 
How are we going to make our image for our poster? What's most important, the image or the text or the subtext? We really need to think about these things before we start making our image. And this is why it's important for us to make our thumbnails. We're looking at some images by Paul Blow here. And we can see that he very much uses ink on paper. And then he pulls these images from ink on paper and starts working with them in Illustrator to develop them and make them more complex. On the left side, we're looking at the war on carbon. We can see that it's literally graphic bullet holes shot through the magazine. And it's on top of the skull coming out of a chimney, like a smokestack. On the right, we see him being more playful with imagery. We see him making a mustache out of broccoli. But the wonderful things about this is seeing his layering and minimal use of color. It's very important when we're designing to not use too much color. We want the importance to be the focus of what's happening, not the oversaturation of imagery. This is Christopher Silas Neal, and again, I wanted students to look at different ways of designing or making illustrations because that's important with poster design. And we can see that Christopher Silas Neal often uses textures overlapped with graphic imagery. So he often makes his own textures, he scans them in, and he lays them on top. Obviously, you can buy textures or you can find textures online to overlay them, but in his case, he generates all of them, which I think often results in the best conclusion. And we can see on the left side, we see smokestacks and these hands grabbing the smoke and kind of turning them into something else. And on the right side, we see the images of green roofs and how these urban centers can become places of growing plants that can be beneficial for people. So it's interesting, the minimal use of color on both of these. On the left side, he has the green and black. And on the right, he has kind of a muted or limited color palette. But I think it's important for us to think about these things, to think about texture, to think about color, to think about how these things are going to look or feel in the very end. So for our poster project, we're going to be dealing with visual hierarchy. And the objective of this project is to visualize typography in two ways. One, as visual elements in a two-dimensional composition, and two, as information which requires hierarchical organization. So what we're going to do with this poster is we are going to be using a title, a subtitle, and one image or illustration of your choice. Now it's important each student to create their own illustration. You must use original imagery that is yours. Obviously, you can collage found imagery. But note, if you do not collage the found imagery to make it your own, it does not constitute an original illustration. So what we're going to do is we're going to analyze the text and image and classify them into three levels of information, dominant, subdominant, and subordinate. These levels will remain constant throughout the project. So things I'd like for you to consider. Think about the relationship of one part to another, Consider how contrast, juxtaposition, exaggeration, isolation can contribute to creating a context for the content. These choices with text and image are crucial for the success of the design. I want you to read over the design guidelines carefully and read over the brief to help you choose the direction of your poster. I want you to read over the compostfoundation.org poster contest rules and guidelines. All designs must be 12 by 18 inches vertical and vertically oriented. Also, the resolution will be 300 dpi in JPEG format for submission. However, I want you to work in your InDesign or Illustrator document with a designated grid to develop this project. The poster must contain the words Compost, Nature's Climate Champion, and the subtitle must include International Compost Awareness Week. It also must include the date, May 5th to 11th, 2024. Also, artists must use their own original artwork or photography. Copyrighted images will not be accepted. I want students to read through the submission guidelines. Basically, it's very similar to the design guidelines. For the parameters, I want students to use only three specified colors. You can use full color photography, but for text and background imagery, I only want you to use three specified colors. Remember, type and text can function as image. It's also recommended to use the font families below. You can choose one serif family or one sans serif family. 
And I've made a list of several fonts here that you can use. Garamond, Baskerville, Castellon, Rockwell, Clarendon, Scala, Bodoni, Futura, Franklin Gothic, Brandon Grotesque, Gil Sands, Helvetica, Meta, and Frutiger. The poster must use a grid structure. Students will work in Illustrator or InDesign and output the design to JPEG format. Typographic rule and reverse type may be used, and you may use type as texture. For homework, I want students to develop their thumbnail sketches, working through the possible outcomes of how this poster may look. Again, I want you to analyze dominant, subdominant, subordinate text. I want you to set your hierarchy, whether the title, subtitle, date, or image fits the highest form of the hierarchy. And I look forward to seeing your results. Good luck.